Buses and coaches have become increasingly high-tech in modern times. A modern vehicle such as this one, uh, late uh, 2018, will have multiple ECUs on board. Now, all of those systems, of course, need to be able to be uh, scanned and uh, viewed through diagnostic equipment. Of course, one of the main things, being a public service vehicle, uh, the care of your passengers and the people travelling on the bus, is of course safety. Now, safety plays a big part with passenger service vehicles and you need to be able to scan all of those safety modules. Think ABS, EBS, even driver's airbag uh, and other onboard safety systems. You need to be able to view those so that you can give your coaches and your buses a clean bill of health at point of service. Oil and filter and the other uh, components underneath the chassis of course need regular servicing as we know. But on top of this now, it's becoming increasingly important from a health and safety point of view to have a certificate or a, a piece of paper that you can uh, produce at any time if anyone should ask that shows that all of the onboard safety systems have been checked uh, and they are functioning uh, and of course functioning correctly and there are no codes in those systems. Of course, engine diagnostics, transmission diagnostics, looking at your exhaust system and your emission system, which has become increasingly uh, a part of modern vehicles like this, uh, DPF, SCR and catalysts, uh, you need to be able to view those too. That of course needs to be viewed through your diagnostic equipment uh, and we're going to take a look and show you a little bit about what uh, gel test can show you on the modern uh, bus and coach system. So let's go and take a look in the driver's seat and see what we can see. So if we're going to be able to talk to the multitude of modules we're going to find in a late model bus or coach just like this one, we're going to need some quite specialist equipment. Jaltest provides us with a diagnostic link box and of course a multi-brand version of software which will enable us to talk to all of the systems that are on a bus just like this one. So let's get down into the, uh, into the office of this coach and uh, let's get plugged in and uh, let's have a look. So we're down here in the business end, uh, we've got our gel test link, uh, which is our, of course our interface to be able to talk to the modules. My laptop's already turned on uh, with the software ready to go. Uh, I simply need to plug in um, and then start communicating with the vehicle. So uh, the OBD plug, which is a, a fairly standard 16 pin uh, OBD type plug in the dash on this one, nice and conveniently for us, powers up our link box. We can see the power light on here, uh, and we're we're now ready to ready to start diagnostics. So my bus software is ready to go, and I only need to now start selecting uh, the brand and then the model, um, and then we'll go in and have a look and see what uh, ECUs we can see. So in this version of software, we've got Jaltis Bus uh, as a module on its own. You can have just a bus module with Jaltis. So we're going to select that module. Of course. It takes us to a full list of brands of which there are 62 bus and coach brands in the software now and of course that, that gets added to all the time. Uh, I'll take you down the list so BCI of course um, which we have a lot of here in NZ. Um, uh, he know some of the Chinese brands of uh, bus and coach and some of the more familiar he knows uh, Mitsubishi's and so forth MANs uh, Mercedes-Benz uh, to, to name but a few. Of course we're in a Volvo bus here so we're going to go all the way down to Volvo. We can of course search for that at the top but we're going to go straight into Volvo. Um, it now gives us an option to go uh, through bus and coaches or by chassis type. Uh, we're going to go through chassis type uh, to this uh, particular vehicle. It's a B11R. Now again we can search or we can simply scroll down through the software uh, to find that so we, we go all the way down to B11R and select it. Now what it's telling me in the software now is there are 36 possible modules on this bus. Um, might not be all of them, some of them may be optional ones, uh, there may be additional body ones or brake ones which are not fitted, we won't know that yet. We, we have an option now to do a full system scan or we could potentially go straight to the module itself, be engine or ABS or the body module or whatever it is that we want to speak to. Um, for this uh, 
video I'm going to do an all system scan just so you can see uh, all the modules that it will pick up. Now in doing this, uh, and I'll get the scan started so uh, I talk over the top of it uh, while it's doing it, um, it will not only uh, look for the modules uh, and it will uh, send out questions from the Jaltis link box uh, asking is that particular module there? If it gets a reply, it will then ask are there any fault codes in that module and then it will it, it will recover the fault code uh, into the tool and display on your laptop and then give you a, an explanation as to what that code is. Um, and then from there you can go deeper into whatever particular module the fault has come up on. And then you can look at things like wiring diagrams and sensor location, etc. Uh, to try and narrow down what that fault might actually be. So I've started the scan running now. Um, it did give me a warning to say that it would take uh, several minutes. Of course, the more modern vehicles like this don't take so long now um, because communication speeds are that much faster. Um, it, it's already now starting to uh, talk through the engine modules. There are several varieties of engines that could potentially be in this Volvo. So it will uh, ask many questions and then when it gets a reply from the appropriate uh, module that it matches up with it will then ask the question about any faults uh, and you'll see that start to build up through this system scan so we'll leave it running and we'll come back in a minute or two and see how it's getting on so our system scan is now completed we've got 12 detected systems in this bus um, and I'm just going to take you through a few of those just to give you a few uh, a bit of an insight into some of that software what you can see and what you can potentially do uh, of course the engine um, extremely important of course you know alongside all the other systems uh, is top of the list uh, and this particular vehicle showing four errors in it we can go straight into the actual engine itself by selecting the module and clicking connect that'll now rather than just doing a simple handshake and are there any faults uh, will now actually start a communication line with that engine ECU so we can go uh, further and do a lot more with that. We'll be able to get into, uh, say, the wiring diagrams or the mechanical data surrounding the engine and the engine components. Um, of course, the all important faults uh, and what they actually are will uh, be able to give us a better explanation as to what the fault is, what the component is that's related with that fault. And of course, that's all linked back to the wiring diagram so that you can begin your testing straight away. So. We're now in the uh, engine computer itself, we're talking to it. We can run the diagnosis again. Uh, I'm not going to do that now, We've, the tool has already done that for me. I can clear those errors, of course look at some system data which is useful if you're reordering ECUs and stuff. Operational data, uh, the, the all important operational data, particularly for a vehicle like this that will do many, many thousands of hours of use. Uh, you'll want to keep a record of that so that ODR data is there. Measurements, live data, of course if you're trying to see why or how a, a sensor may be faulty, measurements uh, and live data is appropriate for taking you into there. I'll briefly show you into the measurements section. So measurement selection, that will take us to the lines of live data. It asks us if we want to configure any triggers in the measurements, which you can do, it's a new feature of gel test, which enables you to set upper and lower limits to what's acceptable. Uh, so you can set your own limits for that. Now we can have a look at the uh, 73 lines of live data. I normally wouldn't randomly select like this, but uh, for, for this video I'm just going to select them all. Now we can either show those uh, bits of information as pure digital bits of information, like 14.2 degrees, or we can actually look at them on a graph. Uh, if we're doing road testing, that's very useful or we can look at them in what we call like an analog form. So uh, here we've got, of course, engine speed, speed limiter states, fuel consumption. Uh, this engine's not running at the moment, so we don't have any of that. Um, total number of engine revolutions is shown, uh, coolant temperature, uh, and we can flick through this. We can see uh, fan speeds, engine torque limitations, vehicle speed, they're all important. Uh, and of course, many of the uh, control switches either on or off or whatever particular state they're in. We can see a throttle position. Uh, sure if I press down on the, on the throttle itself here, we can see the uh, throttle rising up. 
all the way to 100% and back off again uh, as an example. Um, of course we've got all the information on the left hand side now, electrical system data, so that's component information, wiring pinouts, uh, expected output of that sensor, wiring diagrams uh, which will show the components on the diagram itself, all the diagrams are interactive. Vehicle service data uh, is available to us, technical data, so mechanical data for the engine, so this is not just about electronic systems, this is mechanical systems as well. Uh, troubleshooting by symptoms, uh, exactly what it says it is, if you are just at a blank as to how to uh, approach trying to uh, cure a, a problem with a vehicle, you can use the troubleshooting guide and of course all those sensors and the uh, help around it is all uh, put through the troubleshooting guide to, to guide you through. Okay, so I'm going to step back out of the live data for that engine. I'm just going to come back, uh, now disconnect from the engine module itself and go back to my list of other modules. Now, this vehicle being a late model, of course, has AdBlue uh, with its SCR system. I don't know of any workshops uh, this day and age that do not have either DPF, Catalyst, or SCR problems almost daily. Uh, we're dealing with calls, technical calls on that. Um, we've indeed just released our new uh, EMS, uh, DMS 1.4 uh, emission course for diesel. Um, that's now available, but as we can see here, we've got faults for a nitrous oxide sensor. Uh, we've got AdBlue issues. Uh, we've got a data link in interruption, which might indicate a CAN bus problem. Uh, and again, a second uh, CAN bus error there. So there are several issues to deal with. Um, they have all occurred more than once, uh, which would in indicate not just a blip or a low battery voltage issue. These are real and they would need to be addressed. Uh, emission control is something that's becoming uh, a very, very big issue for many workshops. Uh, some simply choosing to delete the systems, which of course is A, not legal, but B, um, completely idiotic. You know, the, the point of having a, an emission system is to control those gases that go out into the system that we all have to then breathe in. So keeping your emission system in tip-top condition and being able to understand that is extremely important. Um, so gel test enables you to see uh, and drive and uh, check those AdBlue systems very nicely and of course the all important DPF uh, and the uh, state in which that is in as far as blockage and ash and soot content uh, is all available through the tool. So I'm just going to come uh, back from that now. And as you can see the tool is now asking me um, it's created a diagnostic report. Now, part of checking your vehicle regularly is being able to generate a diagnostic report. It's all well and good having access to all this information, but if you can't record it or you're having to record it on the, on the back of a piece of paper, it's going to get lost. There's no reference to it. Um, and of course we work in a digital age now where that kind of information can be stored so that the ongoing vehicle records can be kept up to date. Uh, the tool's now saying it's generated a report, do I wish to save it? Uh, of course we recommend everybody saves their reports. You can then add the vehicle details, you may work by rego, uh, you may work by uh, a vehicle number or an asset number, some people work by, um, I'm just going to put this in as a, a test vehicle um, so as not to be uh, specific as this is purely for the video, um, and then save the report. That report then can be shared either amongst yourselves, amongst management. Um, of course, it can be shared with your customers as well. So they may want to see how their vehicle is performing over a set period of time. And those reports are perfect uh, for uh, handing over to your customer. It will, of course, have your header on it. We make sure that's on there. And uh, you can discuss your, the problems with the vehicle, with the customer, uh, and come to a uh, an agreement as to what the, the, the course of action is going to be, so whether that vehicle needs to come off the road, if it's a safety issue, or whether it's a, a minor issue that can be dealt with at the next service point. Uh, of course, not having that information at all gives you no option to discuss that at all. So Jalt is very good for um, giving keeping that record for you. It's kept locally, or you can have it uploaded to the cloud, 
so that uh, other people in your business can view that information uh, and they may wish to action some of the information they see with, with your customers at a, at a different level. So, but from a technician's point of view, uh, my, my work and my scan is now finished. I've got all the information I need. Of course, I can go much, much deeper into these modules to do uh, live data readings and recordings uh, and so forth. But uh, for this video, we're gonna hold it there. Um, I'm gonna back out of the software now, back to the homepage, and uh, we're going to finish there. So if you'd like to try Jaltest and have a look through the software yourself, you can now do an online demonstration with us from the comfort of your own office. We don't even need to come to you, you don't even need to come to us. We can simply log you in and you can have a look through the software to see how it would apply and how it would work for you and your fleet. Um, give us a call or contact us online. We'll only be too happy to help you at AECS get you into some uh, professional level diagnostic equipment. Thanks for listening.